it has worked for my husband and I so many times. Please let me know if you relate to me. I need someone to relate to. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and for those of you who are new, my name is Alicia and I just make any video that I can think of that will bring joy to your life, joy to my life. I talk a lot about my marriage and about how I moved to the other side of the world to marry my husband. I actually posted a video about that recently where I was doing my makeup and telling you guys all about how we met. So if you wanna watch that first, that'll be up here. Today, I am going to be telling you guys five things that I wish I knew before getting married. And while I'm talking to you guys, I'm gonna be getting ready to go to this fashion show event that my church is having where basically you have to buy any outfit from a secondhand store and they model it and the people with the best outfits get prizes. My friend Laura is doing it with me. You guys will know who Laura is if you watched my ranking Starbucks spring drinks video. That's my friend Laura. My first thing that I wish I knew is wedding related because I feel like that is the first step to getting married is your wedding. What makes a good wedding is your mindset during the day. I have been to weddings where it is so luxurious and I can tell that so much time and money and effort have gone into these weddings and I'm looking at the bride and she is so stressed and it makes me feel so sad because it's like you wanted this to be such a happy day and you're stressing the whole day. For those of you who don't know, my husband and I actually had to cancel our wedding that we had planned because of the pandemic. He was stuck in Canada and I was stuck in New Zealand so we couldn't get married. Unfortunately, you have to be in the same place as each other to get married. <laughs> Trust me, I was so desperate I looked it up. Whoa, I look like a ghost. <laughs> It's gonna get worse before it gets better. We were going to be getting married in New Zealand and we had the most beautiful wedding lineup. We had plans to have a big, beautiful wedding day. I was definitely feeling the pressure while wedding planning because like a lot of brides, I just, I wanted the day to be perfect. I wanted everyone to enjoy it and I just wanted it to be memorable. But because of how long the pandemic lasted and how everything outworked itself, long story short, we basically ended up having to have somewhat of a wedding elopement where we could only have 10 people at our wedding and we couldn't even get married in New Zealand. We got married in Canada. We ended up saving so much money, you guys. It was, unbelievable and you know what it was the best day of my life there was no reception no dance floor no five-star meal so many people went out of their way to make the day special for us this lady from my church she did all of my decorating for free and she did like this incredible job she made my cake for free and it was just like such a beautiful cake and the recipe of the cake was the recipe that my mom made every single birthday for me since I was born. And so even though my mom couldn't be there in person because of the pandemic, it felt like she truly was there. It was such a blessing in disguise. So if you're a bride-to-be and you are stressing out about wedding planning and wanting it to be perfect, let me tell you this. The only thing that's gonna make your wedding day perfect for you is your attitude. If you are focused on trying to make everything perfect, if you are financially stressed, it's not going to be a great start to your marriage and you're probably not even gonna feel present on your wedding day and maybe not even remember a lot of it. Don't let your desire for it to be perfect cause you to have more stress in the long run. The second thing I wish I knew before getting married kind of ties in to what I was saying about the wedding. Don't worry too much about being perfect. Before I got married, I put this expectation on myself that when I got married, I was going to be the best cook ever. And my husband was going to go crazy about my cooking every single night. And I was always going to look perfect. I was always gonna have my hair and makeup done. I was never gonna just lounge around in sweatpants or leggings. I was always gonna be really cute because I wanted to keep the spark alive. Putting that kind of expectation on yourself sets you up for not feeling at home in your own home. You also don't need to feel like you have to be perfectly tidy all the time because it's a team effort, right? If your house is a mess, 
it's on both of you to take care of your house and clean it up. And I think a lot of the time as women, we just take that on to ourselves. Like this is 100% my responsibility and I don't want him to lift a finger. And that's just not fair to yourself. And that's how you end up getting resentment towards your spouse and you start feeling burnt out. What actually makes a perfect wife is the wife who laughs with her husband, who supports her husband, who's her husband's best friend and who takes care of herself and sets boundaries for herself so that she's not overworked and anxious all the time trying to be perfect. The third thing I wish I knew before getting married is that one of the best ways to de-escalate a situation when you're in an argument, argument, when you're in an argument or a fight, even if you are so mad at the other person, Go up to them and give them a hug and tell them that you love them and that you're on their team. More often than not, that just brings the situation down, de-escalates it and helps you both to relax or bring your walls down so that you can peacefully work through the conflict. It has worked for my husband and I so many times. And it's not easy to do, right? Because you have to humble yourself. It's like, why would I hug this person? They should be hugging me because they're the one in the wrong. But it just takes one person to be the bigger person and take that stone. What am I saying? To take that step and initiate the reconciliation process. <laughs> I feel like I worded that so weirdly. Okay, so I don't. Sometimes I feel like having been born in South Africa raised in New Zealand and now living in Canada for like two and a half years. Sometimes I feel like I have a speech impediment because the way I speak changes depending on who I'm around, my energy level. Sometimes when I watch back my own YouTube videos and stuff, I'm like, man, I said that word differently like three times in the video. <laughs> Please let me know if you relate to me. I need someone to relate to. The fourth thing I wish I knew before getting married and this might just be a me thing, is to not take it personally when my husband needs a long time. When Josh and I first got married and we would be watching a movie together, I would not be content just sitting on the couch <laughs> next to each other watching the movie. I had to have like my feet resting on him or my head on his shoulder or even sitting on his lap watching the movie. And sometimes he would voice to me that he just needed some personal space. When he said, I need some personal space, what I would hear is, I'm annoyed at you. And that was because the family I grew up in, we never said to each other, oh, I need personal space. We were always welcome to cuddle and show each other physical affection. It took a while for me to realize like, he needs personal space because he didn't grow up in my family and he's not wired the same way I am and he has a different culture to me. And just like he respects my needs in lots of different ways, I also need to respect his needs in this specific way. All right, so that is my hair and makeup done and I'll tell you guys the fifth and final thing I wish I knew before getting married once I have my outfit on. All right, so I'm all ready to go. I've got this hat and then I've got my dress. When I get to the place, I'll ask my friend Laura to quickly give you guys a full view of my full outfit. I got this bag as well. My final thing that I wish I knew before getting married was the love languages. So I actually knew up growing the love languages. You knew up growing the love languages. <laughs> wow. Throwback to two minutes earlier when I said I feel like I have a speech impediment. Guys, I did not new up growing the love languages. I grew up knowing the love languages. One thing that I didn't know before getting married is that it is highly likely that your love language will change once you get married. It's super important to keep communicating what your love language is and how it's changing if you're noticing things like that because your spouse cannot read your mind and you might have to remind them and they might have to remind you multiple times. I appreciate what you're doing for me right now, but the way that you're showing me love is not the way that I need love right now. I appreciate it so much when Josh 
cleans the kitchen and does the washing and does things around the house but acts of service does not mean nearly as much to me as words of affirmation and I would so much rather him look me in the eyes and tell me how much I mean to him and how proud he is of me rather than spring cleaning our entire house. And so it's constantly putting yourself in that other person's shoes and going out of your way to show them that they're loved in the way that they want to feel loved rather than the way that's maybe most natural or easy for you. I will be signing the video out here, but I will also be letting you guys know how I did in the fashion show and I'll get my friend to pan down and show you guys my full outfit once I get there. But I just want to say thank you so much for clicking on this video and watching the whole way through. Seriously, bless you guys. I appreciate it so much. And if you're married, comment down below what's something that you wish you knew before getting married because Honestly, I could make a part two, part three, part four of all of these because there are so many things that you learn once you step into a completely new chapter of life. And the more advice for the unmarried girls, the better. So I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments. This look. Just like that. Fashion show was over and we didn't win. <laughs> but we still got fifteen dollar gift cards to Timmy's. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Can I show your outfit? Sure. Her outfit's so good, you guys. We got this going on. Woo! Yes, got the shoes. Yeah. Woohoo! Bye. <laughs>